Hello everyone, it's Hexis here. The Mystic College unlocks along with your Azurite mine when you reach castle level 30. And it can be very confusing for a lot of us to decide whether or not to upgrade any of these skills in the Mystic College or to continue upgrading your castle levels. And it's very crucial to know which skills to develop based on your gameplay and what's the best order in which you should prioritize upgrading them because each of these upgrades will cost azurite which is the most painful resource in the entire game to collect so in this video we will look at all the different mystic college skills and i will give my opinion on the best skills to upgrade and when especially from a budget player's point of view and before we get into more details keep in mind that the mystic college building itself has to be upgraded before you can research some of these skills and that also requires azurite as a cavalry player your first goal should be to reach c34 or even c35 as soon as possible to be able to recruit t11 cavalry and also those t11 angels this is because the T11 cavalry has two major advantages over the T10 cavalry. One is that its base HP increases by over 30%, which is huge, and the second one is even better. There is a base damage resistance of 25% against archers. And as a frontline unit, its main function is to be defensive and last longer in a fight. And damage stats are the way to go in the game currently. So they are way more important than that 20% increase in attack that the even cavalry provides. And once you reach C34, you can think about investing Azurai into the dodge skill, which is the main thing that makes cavalry a relevant frontline. And maxed out dodge skill is very deadly. And when combined with all those damage stats, like damage reduction against mages, damage reduction for the army, damage reduction for cavalry and so on and so on, cavalry becomes such an attractive frontline choice. However, always keep in mind that it also takes a lot more investment both Azurite and time-wise to become strong when you choose to be a cavalry player. Even for the level 1 dodge here, you require 3600 Azurite and Mystic College level 2. And anyways, as a cavalry player, the best initial skill will be dodge and then continue to level up your castle. The other Misty skills can wait because you are still able to get technology upgrades from your artifacts, emblems, zodiac signs and all the other sources. And if you ask me, I would say rushing C40 and unlocking higher tier troops will be the best investment of your Azurite if you don't spend a lot of money in the game. The Savage Impact skill is very powerful indeed, but it is trigger based and it will most likely act on the enemy's friend line. So it won't really stop the damage coming from the enemy backline basically. Not to mention it will require minimum dodge level 3 and also Misty College at level 5. So that's tons of Azurite before you can even get to the Savage Impact skill. So let me know in the comments below your favorite Misty College skill and also that one skill you would really love to have even if it's years away. Now as an infantry player the Misty College is even less attractive because there aren't any skills like dodge for infantry. I mean, yes, toughness is a very attractive option since it gives damage reduction for infantry. However, think about all the Azurite you will need to get to even the first level. Again, here, the acceleration level has to be 3 and Misty College at level 5. Even if you aren't wasting Azurite since acceleration skill increases infantry hit points, those improvements aren't really worth spending valuable Azurite on because you can get HP improvements from so many other sources. And if you really really want some mystic skills early on, then I would say go for the Blazing Soul to strengthen your angels. So it basically increases the damage of your angels sacred flame by 5.5% on the first level. And the minimum requirement here is the Mystic College building level 2 and then the Azurite for the research itself. So other than these skills, getting C40 unlocked for those tier 13 infantry and mages or archers, plus the next level gear from blacksmith will be my suggestion. And once you have unlocked all those, then it becomes interesting to invest Azurite first to reach acceleration level 3 and then research toughness. And using Blazing Soul as a way to get Flame Missile always will be the priority order. Alright, now let's have a closer look at some of these skills. So the first one here, Elite Infantry, it increases the base hit points of your infantry by 20 at the first level. But to get to that point, you need Mystic College level 6 minimum and Toughness at level 3. Then there is an Azura requirement of 6120 just to research this skill itself. 
So that's already a ton of Azerite. Base hit points, base attack, and all that stuff. That's the stats that's shown here, for example, for the infantry. Tier 10, the base hit points is 1,617. And the base attack is 107, and so on and so on. The next skill is called Dragon Armor. It reduces damage taken by infantry during only cross-realm battles by 4.5% at first level. Again, very high requirements of Azerite to even start the level 1 of this. And it's limited to particular events like Realm Invasion, for example, and not really worth it just to have that much Azerite spent on limited events. Then there is a Dragon Scale Shield. It increases base defense of infantry by 3 when attacked by archers. Again, lots of Azerite required and it only increases your base defense and only against archers. This is mainly because infantry have a problem when they are facing archers. The tier 10 or the even archers have a damage bonus against infantry, so makes sense why they put that skill there, but it's not really that great. And finally, for the infantry, there is an interesting skill called Intervene. Here, the infantry will share the damage taken by archers and mages by 20% at level 1. The percentage is very high. However, I'm not really convinced if it is such a great skill because, for example, when you're hitting solo and if the enemy has a lot of angels and they are attacking your backline, those damage is also shared by your infantry. Even if it is saying that, okay, that shared damage taken by infantry will be additionally reduced by 60%, it's still extra damage taken by infantry. So that's reducing your front line even faster. So I'm not really sure if it is such a great skill. And so the argument that this skill could actually be great to even out that gap between cavalry and infantry players is not really much of a thing, in my opinion. Plus, you need to get there first. Now, if you go to cavalry, the first three skills are the same, like infantry, where there is base HP increase. Increase. The base defense of cavalry here is increased when attacked by mages. That's the only difference. There is this in interesting skill for cavalry again, actually, called Wild Instinct. The cavalry has 15% chance of reducing the damage taken by 13.5%, the huge damage reduction there. It's only a chance. However, there is a good thing for that. Like, if you miss that trigger, then it gets stacked. That is the percentage chance to get it triggered next time. Get stacked, and at some point, it will definitely trigger. And of course, it depends how long you can stay in fight, but with the dodge skill and everything, it's highly likely that you're staying long enough in the fight to at least trigger it once. Now going into the back line, the first one for archers is just archers will deal 0% more damage to mages. I mean, you need to first get to the back line, and so it's not a great skill for archers to have. Then there is a split arrow, which is much better than the first one, although this one requires much more Azurite to get to even that level 1. Archers will have 4% chance to simultaneously hit 3 enemies in the front. Again, a trigger chance. Then the elite archer skill, it increases the base attack of archers. Not the damage, just the attack, so nothing really fancy. Then there is a damage increase for archers during cross-realm battles. So again, limited to events, even if it is a damage increase. The Dragon Slayer Arrow, um, it increases the base attack of archers by 3 when attacking cavalry. So archers already have a bonus against infantry, so here they want to put something to counter cavalry as well, although it is just base attack, nothing so great. And finally, there is a really great skill here called the Reign of Arrows. For the archers, they will attack all the enemy troops with this skill, excluding the beast, every 6 seconds and dealing a percentage of damage of the archer's normal attack, so 2% damage at level 1. This also has an additional 30% chance of dealing damage as well, so it's a very strong skill. And this skill is also particularly effective against those fake marches where you have somebody coming at you with one of every troops and then maybe a lot of angels and the backline, one backline side, and the rest will all be just there to take one hit each. So you can easily deal with them in the first 6 seconds already. Now coming to the mages, the first one is already a great skill called Fatal Hit. Hit, mages have a 3.5% chance of dealing higher damage to the enemy each attack. And then the fanaticism is even better. The mage attack damage is increased by 4.5% at level 1. That's super nice. Then the first three skills are again similar to that of the archers, except for the PS armor skill where it is only when attacking infantry, not cavalry. So again, mages need that extra now against infantry and not cavalry. So whatever. It's not really that great either. It's just increasing the base attack. And finally, this is a very interesting skill. They call the spell. 
So when you're battling with lords, it increases the critical damage by mages lodging critical strikes. So 6% is the level 1 effect. And the critical strikes include fatal hit, which we saw earlier, and then power strike and critical strike. And this is a very powerful skill because 6% increase at level 1. And you can actually see here also how much is it increasing further. And actually, they are all quite decent increases if you can actually get to that. And another interesting thing is about the beast skin, the dark star beast skin, because here it has that skill called critical strike damage taken a reduction. So it's a very strong skill against such skills like critical damage, uh, critical strikes, or the spell skill itself, or fatal hit and all of that. However, you need to spend money to get this skin and that's what I don't like about this. So there you go. For me personally, it's probably gonna be years before I can research some of these skills because I don't buy Azurite. And I always look for the best consistent improvement that I can get out of it for the amount of Azurite spend as well. So castle upgrade and higher tier troops are my way to go. What about you? Let me know in the comments below. And also, before you go, make sure you press that like button and subscribe to get notified of my new videos as soon as they go live. And see you next time. Goodbye, guys.